And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everybody, Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're taking a look at yet another card game. This time we have Bottle Imp. You can't see anything on the cards, but this is all the game is. It's a deck of cards. And really the game is a trick-taking game again, and this one designed mostly for three players. It can be played with more, uh, up to four, but really suggested for three. Um, it's in the same type of vein as Tichu, which I have a video of, um, or other trick-taking games, maybe you've played Spades. Uh, but it has a little bit of a twist to it, and that twist follows a nice storyline. Uh, so why don't we take a look at what's in this deck and how the game plays. Here we're looking at one of the reference cards for Bottle Imp. Uh, you can see here that it lists numbers 1 through 37 uh, it, and 19 is black, but essentially the deck is split into three different colors or three different suits. Uh, yellow, blue, and red. Now, the yellow cards tend to be lower. You can see 1 through 3 are yellow and then there's some blue interspersed uh, until we get to a red card. And then the blue cards tend to be a little bit more in the middle range of cards. So you can see they're pretty evenly distributed from 4 uh, up through about 27. They're kind of rare in the upper numbers. The red cards, 37 being red, 36 and 35, all tend to be higher. But you can see that they do somewhat go down uh, into the lower numbers all the way down as low as 11. So suits are going to be distributed mostly for yellow being lower, blue being in the middle, and red being higher. But there are exceptions to this, and this is very important to the construction of the deck. As I mentioned during the intro, Bottle Imp is a trick-taking game, uh, but it's followed around the theme of a, of a cursed bottle that somebody bought and that they needed or want to try and get rid of, or else if they, if they don't get rid of it, they're going to be uh, dragged down to some place they don't want to go when they die. So uh, the game focuses around a changing level of trump. Uh, the beginning of the game, players are going to have uh, a hand of cards, and there's going to be the bottle card. You can see this is a bottle. The original game came with an actual wooden bottle, but newer versions actually come with this card. And this card is just meant to represent the cursed bottle. Uh, and underneath the card at the beginning of the game will be the 19. The 19, as I mentioned earlier on the, on the reference cards, is a black card, and that's because it's never used in play. 19 is what the set bottle price is going to be called. So right now, this bottle will be at 19. And that means that any card above 19 is going to be played normally. For example, a 37 is the highest card, it will be to 36, and so forth and so on. However, any card underneath the bottle price, which right now is 19, is considered to be trump. A trick that wins using trump, so for example, if the 18 were to win a trick, the 18 would go underneath this card, all of the rest of the cards would be taken by the, the player who won the trick, and the new bottle price would be 19, or sorry, 18. Now this is important because that sets the new trump level. Now everything underneath 18 is trump. For example though, let's say somebody were to win a trick with the 4 after the 19 were trump. Once they win with that 4, 4 becomes the new bottle price and there are now several less trump cards, meaning that only 3, 2, and 1 can now be trump. This is bad because you do not want to end the round with the bottle because the player who ends the round with the bottle will earn negative points for that round. The rest of the deck of Bottle Imp is consisted, as I mentioned earlier, of three suits. And you can see yellow, red, and blue. And that on these cards there's both a number, so that this is the three yellow card. There's a 26 red and a 27 blue. Uh, you can also see that there are coins on the, on the cards. And these coins are going to be points that you earned at the end of the round for having taken this card in one of your tricks. The coins will be added up for each player that did not end with the bottle, and those that will be their score for the round, whereas the player who ended up with the bottle will earn negative points equal to cards that have been placed under there each round. So here we see a starting example for a play area for Bottle Imp. This is a three-player game, as I said, the recommended amount of players. Uh, now normally at the beginning of the game, uh, or at the beginning of each hand, the players are going to deal out all of the cards. Um, and some of the cards are going to be set aside, or so actually some of the cards each player is going to take one card from their hand, place it underneath the bottle, and they're going to pass one card to each of their opponents. So everybody's going to receive two cards from their opponents, and they're going to throw one card underneath the bottle here. Now, the cards that are underneath the bottle are going to be negative points for whoever ends up with the bottle at the end of the round. And as I showed you earlier, there are those coins on the cards that determine how many points they're worth. So you don't want to get stuck with the bottle, 
And you may want to throw high points under there if you think you have a really good hand, because whoever gets it is going to go down and score. Anyhow, after the cards are dealt and everybody's decided what they're passing and what they're putting under the bottle, somebody, whoever is to the left of the dealer, will lead the hand. And let's say, for example, the player here on my left is leading the hand. So he'll lead with a 28. Now, 28 is not under 19, so it's not a trump card, and every other player will have to follow suit if they can. So, if they have a yellow card, they must follow suit, whether or not the yellow card is trump. The next player plays a 22, which is under the 28, but isn't trump, so right now the 28 is winning the hand still. The final player plays the 25, also underneath the 28, and the 28 wins the trick. Trump has not changed. The player that won the trick will lead again, and this time leads a 33 in red. So now the next player must lead, or must follow red, and follows with a 14. This 14 is now trump, as it's underneath the 19 of the bottle price. The third player plays a 26, which is not trump, and the 14 takes the trick. The 14 becomes the new bottle price, going underneath the bottle, and belongs to the player that won the trick. That player takes the rest of the cards from the trick, putting him in his area. He will then lead the next trick, and lead to 32 blue, not trump. The next player must follow in blue, and plays the 6, which is underneath the current bottle price of 14. The final player plays a 10, which is above the 6. In this case, since both of the cards are trump, the higher trump card wins, and the 10 will take the trick. That player will take the cards, the new bottle price will become 10, the card previously under the bottle goes to the player who had owned the bottle, and the bottle now belongs to the player who took the trick. Being stuck with the bottle at the end of the round is bad, and note that only 9 and below are now trump. If you get stuck with a low card earlier in the game, it becomes awfully difficult to get rid of the bottle. In order to do so, you must play underneath somebody else's trump when they are currently winning a trick. So that's Bottle Imp, quite possibly my second favorite trick-taking game behind Tichu. Now, there's a clarification there. With four players, definitely Tichu. Not a question. Bottle Imp doesn't hold a candle to Tichu four players. With three players, by far Bottle Imp. You can't really play Tichu with three, so uh, Bottle Imp is a great substitute. It's really got a nice tight feeling with three players. Um, you, you don't feel like you're out of control, that the cards are controlling too much. Obviously, there is some aspect to uh, getting the right deal, uh, being able to play the right cards, but if you know what you're doing and you, you're playing with experienced players, there really is more strategy to how you play than what cards you get. Um, I really enjoy this game. As I said, with four, definitely play Tichu, but with three, Bottle Imp is probably the best substitute you're going to find. I would suggest picking this up. It's very low cost. Um, you can play it pretty quickly, and it's a great time. So if you like trick-taking games, if you like Tichu, I think you'll love Bottle Imp. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.